Chapter 23. You don't get extra lives in space. I could barely even finish my cosmic quencher. I went over to the possibility building to look at the rocket. I thought it would make me feel better to see it, looking so solid with its extra oxygen tanks and its extra bulletproofing. Mr Bean was there, looking up at it too. I said, Mr Bean, has anyone ever died on this? On this particular rocket? No. This is what you call an expendable launch vehicle. You're only supposed to use it once. A bit like one of those throwaway razors. You can't really know that an expendable will work until it's already up there. And by then, it's too late. The thought that they were going to space in a throwaway razor wasn't particularly reassuring. It got worse. People do get killed on rockets, he went on. Gus Grissom, he died when Apollo 1 caught fire on the launch pad, along with Ed White and Roger Chaffee. Oh, right. But, th but that was a long time ago. This is a different kind of rocket. If you're looking for something more recent, well, I'm not looking exactly. I, I was just asking. The crew of the Columbia shuttle, they all died on re-entry. There were seven of them. The crew of the shuttle Challenger all died on takeoff. Seven of them too, all really young. I did say then, thanks, I think you've answered my question, but there was no stopping him. And then there was Soyuz 1, when the parachute didn't open, Vladimir Komarov. That was awful. He knew he had no chance. Everyone could hear him talking to his wife on the radio, talking about the kids, and oh, honestly, I said, that's enough information. Thank you. I began to walk away. Mr Bean called after me. Going into space isn't like one of those video games. If you die, you don't get any extra lives. That's when I decided I was going to, going to go and drag Florida out of the clue quarters and take her home to safety. We could walk home to Bootle if we had to. Obviously, it would be better to go in a plane. So as I strode across the rocket tramway lines and the bridge over the fire pit, I was rehearsing the speech I was going to make to Dr. Drax about how it would be better for everyone if she gave us the airfare. But as I got nearer, I could hear her shouting and saw a Draxcom personnel vehicle screeching up to the crew quarters. Dr. Drax was yelling and Mr. Xanadu was yelling back at her and throwing his bags into the back of the car. As the car drove away, Dr. Drax turned to go back to the house. Then she saw me and she looked really surprised. Mr. Digby, she said, how did you know? I suppose you guessed. I should have guessed myself, of course. I didn't know what she was on about. Mr. Xanadu, she said, has totally betrayed me. It turned out that one Mr. Xanadu was cheerily taking all those photographs of the penultima. He wasn't really interested in happy smiling faces. He was taking photos of the flight simulator and the control panels. He'd sent the photographs to a toy company in Shanghai, asking them to build a full size working replica of it for Hassan. Sadly for him, Dr. Drax also owned the Shanghai toy company. They told me everything. He even went to them with an idea to make dolls out of you all, to sell. He was going to call them the Astro Kids. Can you imagine? Where did these people get their ideas? At least no harm has been done. Except to Mr Xanadu, of course. He will no longer be the responsible adult accompanying the children into space. That honour will go to the person who came second in the competition. Namely, you, Mr Digby. Oh. Give yourself a moment for the news to sink in. Somehow, it seemed to take more than a moment. Somehow, my brain wouldn't work. She said, Mr Digby? You mean, I could go to space? I looked over my shoulder. It was nearly a mile away, but there was nothing between me and the possibility building. It still filled most of the sky. I was standing in its shadow. You do know, of course, what those letters say. Dr Jax pointed at the huge black Chinese letters up the side. No. They are the slogan of Infinity Park. They say, the world is my thrill ride. But that's, that's what you said to me on the phone that day. That's why I specially selected you. It seems to sum up everything I was trying to say. You know, Mr Digby, I always knew you'd be the one who'd go to space in the end. You remind me very much of my own father. You have a similar quality, a sort of childlike quality. I could hear the other children talking and laughing behind her. I could feel the cool shadow of the rocket on my back. Was it different if I was going too? 
Was it all right to send my daughter to space if I was going with her? All I had to do was say, thank you, and I would be riding the rocket. I took a deep breath and I said, Dr. Drax, I know you think I'm a responsible adult, but I'm not. I'm just a boy, an unusually tall and hairy boy, but a boy. I felt better straight away, like gravity had somehow decreased and I was sort of floating. There, it was all over, no more pretending, no more responsibility. I didn't care what she said to me now. But Dr. Jax just smiled. She touched my hand, she said, that's exactly what I mean about you. You have the right quality. You feel like a child inside. So did Einstein all his life. He said he never stopped thinking like a child. That's why he made those great discoveries. No, I don't mean I feel like a child. I mean, I'm not really grown up. Perfect, exactly. Anyone who feels like they're all grown up is no use to this project. It's the people who feel like they've got nothing left to learn. Exactly, I, I haven't finished school. I've, I've hardly started. I feel just the same way. The universe is so huge, we've barely glimpsed it. Give me someone who thinks they know something, nothing over someone who thinks he knows everything any day. But, by the way, take good care of Hassan, won't you? It's a hard time for him. He'll be disappointed that his father isn't coming, and upset, because obviously I'm suing Mr Zanadu for every penny he's got. Oh, really? Yes, I'm determined to put him in jail for what he did. Right. Was there anything else you wanted to say? I thought it was probably, probably wasn't the best moment to tell her I'd been lying to her for weeks, or that I tricked her into putting me, age 12 and a bit, in charge of a rocket costing one billion dollars. In fact, she said, can you sign this while you're here? It's a release form giving me permission to use your wonderful phrase, the world is my thrill ride, on all our publicity. Just there. Thank you. And it only remains for me to say, enjoy the ride.